Hello and welcome to another MoTeC webinar. My name's Pete Swinney and today's subject is an introduction to M1 Tune Part 2. Just a quick review on where we left off from Part 1, just showing to you the sheet layout that we've got pre-configured for the CDU package. Each um, list of sheets or each tab of sheets has different components listed on them and each component has a a different task. Uh, the calibrate component is there to show you graphs and tables and parameters to help you actually do the physical tuning. The time graph component allows you to view uh, live channels uh, in a graphical nature so you can see engine speed going up and down your your lambda trace rather than worrying about the number you see a line uh, attempt you're attempting to match a line to the fuel mixture aim channel and so ignition timing, throttle position and things like that on, on uh, the time graph. We've got a channel list here where we've got a list of relevant channels uh, for in this case the ignition page and various graphs, style gauges, bar graphs, that kind of thing laid out here for you to keep an eye on other commonly watched parameters like fuel pressure and oil pressure. So just to cover the uh, calibrate page, it's, it is, as I said earlier, split into three areas. Um, you, the parameters and table listings on the left, and then the graphs and tables themselves on the right. Now you can toggle how you look at this by pressing the G key. If you press G once, you go to a single uh, graphical graph if you like, then G again you go to the table and then G again you go back to a split view of both the graph and the table. I'll just flick to the live software and give you a quick demonstration of that. So we're just online here with an electronic simulator which is not really an engine but we do our best to make it look like an engine running. So in this case we, you can see we're in the ignition screen, I can click from one to the other and actually press control and one and control two to take me control three to each various screen so the number here after the control tab shortcuts you to that screen so if I go back to control one we're back to the fuel screen I pick up the graphical uh, screen here on the, the graph here and I can twist it around and look at it and make sure I've got things the way I want all right, so we can see the table here, the um, time graph down here, our channel list and our various gauges. Now in the case of the fuel screen here, there are no parameters on the left, so I just get the fuel table and fuel graph. And if I press G, I can have just the table, G, just the graph, and then G back to the two of them together. So I'm just going to go look at the graph here, and then if I press F6, I get the whole thing as one one large screen so I can really look up close at uh, any um, problems I might have with the map, some inconsistencies, some pits and troughs I don't don't like I can straighten out at this point. Alright so F6 takes me back to that screen and G back to the split. Over on the ignition screen you see in this case we've actually got some parameter options here and in this case it's because the I have a couple of options I have two in fact ignition uh, table possibilities we've got an, an ignition table that's based on inlet manifold pressure if you want to configure it and an ignition table based on throttle position and a couple of other parameters here that I can adjust all to do with ignition so um, but the same rules apply as far as pushing G goes you can see me toggling around there for now Alright, so that's the calibrate table. Right, so the next thing we want to talk about is how to make a change in that table. And like most ECUs you'll come across, you'll normally highlight on a site and then make a change by entering a number in and pressing enter, or by doing some maths or using page up and page down. So if I choose a single site, I can type in a larger or smaller number, I can use the page up and down, and I can hold control down and make the page up and down a larger step. I can also do maths on it, uh, and the way to enter that is to press equals first, and then enter a number and uh, either subtract, add, divide, whatever maths function you want to do. 
All right, let's just flick across and show you some of that. All right, so I'm in the uh, ignition map here, and if we perhaps go up to this point, two and a half thousand revs at 60% throttle, and we've got 31 degrees, we could make that 20. So you just type it. As soon as you type uh, the numbers, the highlight comes up, and you press enter, and you'll see that's changed. Go back to say 35, and you can see the graph changing as well at the same time. 40. You can see it changing and you also see a diamond appear. What that diamond means is that we've made a change and that, that we haven't actually saved that permanently to the ECU. Now this these updates are happening live in the ECU so the moment you press enter the ECU changes but until we actually physically save it in the ECU it's not remembered there so if we were to disconnect at this point the ECU software would drop back down to that original number of 31.5. Alright, so I'll use the page down, just tap, tap, tap on the page down, you can see the numbers going up and down, and if I hold control down, you see the number changes at a faster rate. Okay, and press enter. Alright, now I can also highlight some sites. I can hold the shift key down, and I'm up arrowing and left arrowing, and I can page the whole lot up and down. This is something M800 couldn't do. It's a, a nice little feature that, of the M1. Okay, so I'm doing that. Now I might decide, oh, I'll press enter. I've locked that in now. But, oh, I've made a mistake. So we've got a couple of options here. If you've got the mouse handy, you can go and press back arrow or control Z and everything drops back to the way it was. It's a nice feature. So if I want to get rid of the red diamonds at this point, I, I go to save so control s forces to save into the ecu so even if you lose comms at this point um, it's now the, the 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 adjustments are now hard code saved into the ecu all right and what was the other one the uh, math so if i want to add two numbers to that let's go and highlights just here so equals uh, the uh, mass function plus two enter so we just added two numbers to all of them so equals plus eight enter get the idea and I can page that back down or I could just go control Z and it goes back okay back to the presentation So we've got a couple of uh, nice graphical uh, modification features, interpol interpolates and smooths. So what you can do is you can block interpolate. I don't use this very often, so but you can highlight a, a square area using shift and arrow. And then a block interpolate basically squares the whole lot up. So it brings everything into a flat plane. Uh, again, not something I'd normally use. Vertical interpolate, same as the M800, you can choose a vertical column and click on interpolate and it will make them all, all the numbers uh, align evenly from the beginning to the end. Same thing with horizontal and a new feature is smooth. You can select a whole area and click on the smooth um, uh, icon and that will begin to smooth out any inconsistencies in the map and the best way to show you that is in the software so got a rather large step in the ignition map here it's intentional but let's see if we can't smooth that out a little bit save a maybe a large uh, step or a, a surge happening at that point just pop down over this edge here all right, so we've highlighted that area, and if we go up to here, we can see smooth. And I click it once, and it starts to smooth it. And the more times I click it, the more it kind of smooths that whole thing out. And you can see the whole thing is looking quite a lot different now. Now, any sites that we've well adjusted previously, and that what that means is that a site that's been tuned while on site, or you've backspaced, asterisked it, uh, that means that won't be adjusted when you use interpolate uh, or smooth functions. All right, so in this case, let's just go Control Z and it's all back to normal again. OK, 
Okay, so we can highlight a, we can actually do this with the mouse if we like, we can highlight a row like that and then up here is where you can choose which type of interpolate you want with block interpolate horizontally or vertically all right so you can see that's done a but a flat plane interpolate of those sites it's pretty uninteresting and it's pretty much uh, devastated my ignition map so i'll control z that okay back to the presentation all right that's covered that now calibrated or marked sites this is important so it actually in the M800 uh, series of ECUs it, we used to call this asterixing in the M1 it's a small black square and what this means is if you have been on site which means at an exact location and if I point here if you're at exactly at on the site here where it's 30% throttle and whatever that RPM row is and you make a change whether it's a quick lambda change or just um, you enter a new number and press enter then that becomes a well-tuned site and the ECU marks it with a black square All right, and down here you'll note we've got a black square and red diamonds so to repeat the red diamonds means that you've changed these sites but you haven't saved them to the ECU yet and the black square means you were on this site when you made the change so therefore it's what we would call a well-adjusted site all right so if you have made some changes and you want to get rid of all of these black dots you can highlight uh, hold down the shift key and arrow across and press delete and they won't delete all the numbers in your map it will simply delete all those black squares so you can start again with your well-adjusted sites all right, and as again, always get in the, try and get into the habit of pre pressing Control S to save your current work into the ECU. If you don't do that, and the, um, maybe the laptop becomes disconnected from the uh, ECU, you don't lose the work. The work stays on the laptop, but it gets removed or, or it's not saved permanently in the ECU at that time. The ECU reverts back to its previous program, so you can obviously save your work that's on your laptop and then send it to the ECU to get you back to where you were but to avoid all of that happening you just press control s uh, kind of at a fairly regular intervals right we'll just flick over again to the software and I'll show you some of that working so we've got our ECU uh, connected to our electronic engine our simulator and uh, just moving a little knob up and down on the simulator and you can see the RPM coming up and down on the gauge here this yellow rod here is a representation of the live site you can see my ignition timing curve changing as I'm changing the through the sites on the graph all right and we can end up at a, uh, a site that we want to tune let's flick over to the fuel map all right, and so what we want to do is get to a particular site and we could do uh, a tuning change here. So the best way to get to the nearest site where the engine is so we can adjust it is to press the space bar and you can hear me doing that. And over here is a target map. Now you can configure this on and off the screen, uh, but what it shows you, if it goes green, it means that the engine is very close to where your cursor is ready to make an adjustment. So in this particular part, point we're in the effi engine efficiency map which is your fuel table and we are set at the manifold pressure sitting at 140 kPa so it's got a little bit of boost the engines at three and a half thousand revs you can see me revving it up and down here again so the white outline here is where a change would be made if I entered a number so if I press page up this is where we have the uh, site highlighted and as I bring the engine closer to that site where I'm going to make an adjustment you'll see the target coming in and it goes from red to green when it's within a, a good target place or a good time to make an adjustment to look at the lambda and either make a quick lambda change or a, me a mechanical or a, um, a, a manual change to bring the lambda right so I'll just change my lander which obviously again I haven't got an engine here I can change that manually so my lander at the moment is 0.83 and my main aim is 0.90 so one would say that that is a little rich for what I'm after for this particular point 
So I can just page this, um, bring the focus back to here and I can page this down and as I page it down the lambda should get leaner and approach my aim. We've gone over a sh overshoot a bit there. So then I can press enter and when I press enter if I'm on site I should get a backspace. Alright and that gives me an indication that I made that change while I was on site. So the black box indicates later to me that it was a sensible number and that I should take that as gospel. We can see it's really easy to see when we look on the graph or on the table here where the black dots are. So if I've gone through a couple of spots and you can press backspace to force a black a, a well adjusted site we can manually adjust it and say right let's trust that site you can go through the tune and, and put them down and uh, you know that those sites were correct and you may want to smooth the map appropriately between the sites that you've been to. Alright now I press control S here and the black black squares don't disappear because they remain as well adjusted sites but the red dot the red diamonds have disappeared and uh, we know we're up to the got the latest save into the ECU all right back to the PowerPoint all right so let's see if I've got this covered here sites sites tune on site mark black square yep force black squares with a backspace yep highlight then delete to remove the black square Interpolate or smooth functions maintain black square site numbers. Yes, we covered that before. And control S to save to the ECU. Great. All right, so the channel list is a list of uh, items that are relevant to the sheet you're on. So you can see lists of them here. You can see statuses where their things are okay or not okay. They will actually tell you what errors are when, when, as, when and if they occur. And you can see normal. Uh, numeric representations of um, voltages, percentages, whatever's going on in the ECU. Alright, so pretty basic. Um, every ECU's got them. Alright, the time graph is a really nice feature and this is configurable. You can change what's on here so you can see live data uh, scrolling across the length of time is configurable, but as, as configured uh, standard, it works pretty well. But one of the really, really nice things about this is you can pause this data, and I'm going to show you this in the software now. So uh, here we have the, the engines been cruising along here at 3000 revs for some time while I've been in the other screen. And what I can do at this point is press T. Now you'll see that everything has stopped moving here no longer is the, the screen scrolling across and up the top here on the left hand side there is the connected icon is flashing so what that's telling you is you, there's no longer any updates happening on the screen so if the engine was overheating or over revving you wouldn't know so you should either have the engine idling or off at this point um, but at this point now we can analyze some data so this is a little bit like pulling log data but it's already all here for you to see. So this screen here I'm just going to bring the focus onto the time graph. Now the first thing I can do if I'm going to analyze this data is I can press F6 and it becomes full screen. And this now is almost exactly like uh, looking at data in I2. I can press F2 and five minutes ago when I was uh, moving the RPM up and down you can see that here so I can double click and highlight on this so here's me moving the RPM up and down and all the normal I2 functions are now available to you so if you for instance wanted to see uh, injected duty cycle or any other channel onto you want you can bring onto this time graph and have a look at the data so I press C for channels brings out the box from the left hand side and type in fuel injector and fuel injector duty cycle so if we double click that it'll actually automatically appear down as a percentage next to the throttle position so I can see my fuel injector duty cycle and I can add and subtract channels at will and have a look 
at what's happening and what the tune was like I can do a ramp run I can go for a drive around the block come back have a look at the data don't need to pull uh, log data out and then open up I2 it's all here for you to look at so what we'll do is we'll come back shortly and show you how to use this for tuning so bang F6 back to normal screen setup and T to resume normal uh, operation all right very very nice feature now you'll see I've still actually it's remembered the fact that it's still got the fuel injected duty cycle on here so you can completely configure this particular component unlike the other ones you can't change the layout of so I can just double click that and it's gone so this is just like a little miniature live version of i2 happening for you all the time so you can be online for three hours and you can press T F2 and there'll be three hours of data stacked up here for you to go back and see what happens all right we can come back and have a look at the engine temp air temp any of the channels that are uh, available in the ECU you can bring down into the screen it's awesome back to the PowerPoint all right so we got that covered off all right so here's some screens telling you a bit more about this so once T is pushed the the icon changes and you can scroll through and go to F6 and make it uh, full screen okay all right quick lambda this is virtually exactly the same as the M800 looks a little bit different but does virtually the same thing you get your the engine on site you push Q a box turns up and looks at what your fuel aim or your uh, your mixture aim value is it looks at what it asks you sorry it looks at what the current uh, lambda is and then it automatically adjusts the table number to make the lambda correct so as little as two pushes of Q within half a second of one another should have the lambda um, your aim lambda dead right in your fuel map and the job is done so just go back over to here so here we have if I press uh, make sure we've got focus here press the space bar we're now on site at 3500 rpm and 140 kPa we know we're on site because the target is green and let me make this a little richer okay in fact I won't I'll make it leaner so the engine now is running at 0.97 and our aim is 0.90 if I press Q we can see the number go up we can see the uh, the red diamond appear because we've made a change I can press enter and lock that in I can press Q and I can keep pressing Q and because the lambda is not changing for the uh, like an engine would change when you pull the fuel out uh, the number keeps going up so we'll just bring it down and see we've got only a small error now and so I'm pushing Q and the numbers popping back down so the reality is within one push it should be at 90% of the aim and the second push will of the Q will put virtually put your smack on the key thing with this is that you want to get the engine on site so the target green before you press Q uh, if you do that then you should have a reasonably accurate number or a, a reasonably accurate change at that point okay so that's quick lambda W same as the M800 again basically you place the engine on site you press W it looks up the actual lambda looks up the aim the fuel mixture aim it automatically changes to the number to suit and it also copies the new number to the site above and the sites to the right now you really only want to use this when you're tuning a new map from scratch when you've got no idea and it really isn't that commonly used if you've got a good start file then W will actually almost make things worse than better I will show you what it does so here we are uh, as an example we can if I press W there now I've only got a minor error but you can see that it's uh, made the change and copied the number up and to the right so it's almost ruined my map if it's relatively uh, in a relatively good shape but if you've got if the numbers are a mile out then often 
a quick ramp by pushing W will get the numbers well adjusted all in close relation to one another now you later will have to go onto each site and get the f the final shape right but this gets the numbers very quickly in the ballpark I'm going to pr press control Z to go back that doesn't look to be available I have to say on oh yes it is on quick lambda it's done half of it oh yes maybe that was one we'd done before all right so uh, that's W back to the PowerPoint all right now you can actually do quick lambda on paused live data so you need to be very careful that you're not retuning data you've already tuned but if you've gone for a drive around the block with your laptop uh, done a ramp run uh, what whatever you like you can find the point in the data and you can press Q for quick lambda and the same thing virtually happens so again let me show you that happening so we can uh, we'll change go for our drive around the block here and can be chasing the uh, sites here by pressing spacebar but we're not making any tunes in this case I've only got one finger here so I'm only adjusting the RPM at this point and might come back down to idle all right so at this point you might have parked the car it's sitting there idling away we can press come down onto our time graph and press T we can then press F2 that's the whole the whole uh, session that we've been working with so far today we can double click and drag on that little session so there's a little session we've just done now I might go F6 for full screen and I can come across to in fact I'll go back so I'll we'll show you this happening so here we are at near enough to four and a half thousand revs which should be pretty close to a site so we click up here press uh, space bar it chases the site it shows me that I'm very close to being on site and at this point our lambda was pretty close but if I press Q for quick lambda it's going to give me some advice and say the exhaust uh, lambda channel is I uh, was 887 the aim was 0.90 and I can choose to apply that so I do that it makes the change a nice little feature is that if I go to do that again it knows that we've been there and shouldn't change the site and it didn't all right so that's quick lambda on paused data again a really useful function same thing but with W uh, not something I think you would use but again it's there if you want all right so I've now just got some uh, keyboard shortcuts for you to learn it's uh, gathered them all together on a couple of pages here I'm certainly not going to go through them all but you can pause this uh, video and have a look at those shortcuts and take down or print or copy whatever you like um, at some point we'll get them in the help so that you they they're perhaps print it print outable from there all right uh, and a second page of them so lots and lots of shortcuts to help you uh, maneuver around the software without having to use the mouse and a third page of them there all right so that's it for this presentation uh, you can get some more information uh, via our website and there's a link to our webinars which are in fact on YouTube at the Motec Australia site and you can ask questions on our forum so that's motec.com forward slash forum thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time